Well, I may be just a tiny bit biased, but one of the, my favorite things we do here at 100 Huntley Street is making a difference for those who are oppressed, exploited, or suffering in the world. And the person who makes all of that happen is David Shelley. He is here to bring us an update on an exciting project that is drought-proofing people in northern Kenya. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, great to be here. You know, we started this project how many years ago now? Yeah. Three? Three? About three, three years, years ago? ago. I mean, the study of trying to find out what's the solution started before that. But So basically, yeah. it's an area in, in the desert of northern Kenya called with the Turkana people, and they've been in a cycle of drought. They're constantly starving. And we helped them during the East Africa famine, and then we said, we got to find a way to break this cycle. Feeding programs are not the answer. And so what happened next? Right. So, I mean, we got together with, with uh, uh, engineering friends from EMI uh, Canada and developed a plan to... Uh, create these garden, large garden plots with uh, large boreholes that that pump water, that will pump water for them year round, solar powered. And just to give you some size, because we say, you know, we're, we're, we're putting together these, these garden farms. Uh, you know, a garden farm, it's about 36 acres. It's like 25 football fields. Wow. Um, the water that we're pumping is, is we, out of one borehole, we can pump about 35 cubic meters in one hour. That's like 35,000 liters in an hour from solar powered. Wow. Um, the underground piping, we, we put in over four kilometers of underground piping in one farm. And we're doing so, 10 farms. Our, we're doing 10. We're focusing on our first four though. You know, we have to watch that we uh, want to encourage the people and we want to keep the the construction going so that they're encouraged that, hey, I'm next, I'm next. So the first garden farm's already installed. Um, it's already operational. People have been harvesting crops out of it, have been eating. Um, we've been going through this past year of trying to train them on better agricultural practices, mm -hmm. which is really important. And, and we've started on the installation of the second farm. So the Lobro farm is the first, the SSJ is the second. So we're working on that one. And Installation it, right now. In fact, team members have, are there right now. When I left, and I just got back, um, other team members are arriving to look at the, the technical parts, the installation, the engineering. Can we improve things? How's it working? So. And the significance of these first four farms is that there are four main clans. So we want to make sure that each clan has one farm Correct. at least. Like one, these farms are gigantic. Correct. At least, and then we can worry about the other six that will help more and more people because they share. Correct. Yeah, they the share. Uh, on the first Lowborough farm, the community decided that listen, we're gonna, we're all of us are gonna share on these on these plots, these quarter acre plots, rather than just one family. Mm -hmm. So we've got over 360 families that are on the first farm. It's like 3,000 plus people. Wow. So the second one, we, we're, we're just starting to install and test the system. The third one, we've already started. The boreholes are there. The land is cleared. We want to start to put a, a, a tank system up, get the solar system installed. So it's all going in stages, and it's, but it's big, and it's... Uh, we need the Lord's help to pull it off. Well, this is so exciting to me. I was there in 2012 and, you know, uh, we were still surveying and clearing the land and there was a lot of suffering. And the thing I remember is people coming up to me all day long saying, please help me. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm hungry. That's all I heard. You know, I've been all over the world and I've never heard that consistent cry for hunger, you know, money or help or different things, but never just that hunger and seeing people starving for the first time. You were just there. As you said, you just got back. Tell me about that first farm. What was different? Just paint it for me because I want to see it. Well, the, you know, you see uh, different families growing crops. Some have just harvested. Some are, have just started. Some have, have uh, sorghum and watermelons and cow peas growing. I mean, there's ladies that are happy in their gardens because there's all sorts of produce that they've never had before. So the, the, the um, I guess the, the people are finally realizing, that, oh, it's actually going to happen. We've had lots of promises on what's going to happen, but now it's actually started to happen. So just that hope springs up in people. And uh, so it's, it's really gratifying to see it. It's, it's streams in the desert was our theme, and that's what we're creating. We're it, seeing with it God's now. help, we are starting to see the fruit of that. I'm longing for the day I can go back. I remember Margaret telling me that her dream was to be fat. She was an older lady, and I was like, your dream is to be what? Nobody here in North America dreams of being fat. But she meant, you know, like, I'm just dreaming of having some meat on my bones. Yeah, and the reality is, you know, people are still dying on those farms. We, had, we have a project steering committee 
and a, a chairman named Samson. And his is the farm we're working on now. And he got ill and uh, didn't see him for a week or so. He was in his hut and he died because, because not having food every day, they're not resilient enough to fight off any, any kind of disease that comes their way. So it's still, we're still surrounded by the challenge of, of getting these, especially the first four started. Um, and, and all of our team is passionate about making it happen. Mm, well, people have been so faithful to give to this project, and I know you even sent over some food sources from the gleaners, a soup mix that can help the people who are still waiting while they're waiting. Yes, we just loaded a container, and it's uh, on its way over. And yeah, the gleaner soup mix is a great help because the people that are still waiting, you try to encourage them and help the, the, the ones that are most desperate, and that's such a great, great food source and healthy and, and well, so... Yeah, we so appreciate the work that you do and the vision that you had. This is a big undertaking for us. The vision that you've had to just follow this through, and we're going to keep we're going to keep working away at it and building those those gardens as people give and we're able. Yes, we just want to persevere, and 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 uh, do a good job on the ground so that people are encouraged and have hope and see Christ in us. It's wonderful. Hope is springing up. And for those of you who have given, we want to be accountable. We want to bring you these updates and let you know, you know, when we brought this to you, so many of you gave so generously and it is making a difference and people are starting to have harvest and they're singing and they're celebrating. That is thanks to your faithfulness. When you support this program, these are the kind of miracles that happen. 